Good evening, folks. This is part three. <clears throat> I went with a direct approach. The jig is up, wench, I said. I'm done with you. Grab whatever shit you had when you came in here and get the fuck out. I can't do that, she said so calmly it made me shudder. Why? Get the fuck out. No, she said. You made a promise. What promise? I was nervous now. Maybe I should knock her out and leave her on someone's doorstep. That might be too risky, though. She could be a Taekwondo master. You asked me to marry you last night. I nearly passed out. All I could think of was jumping out the window. It was no use. Damn that realtor for selling me a condo on the first floor. She must have known. This wretched engagement had all the makings of a setup. I had to move quickly, like grease lightning or a monkey shot out of a cannon. So what's for breakfast? The sea wench bellowed. Breakfast, I said. It's in the light socket. Just put your finger in and it will be delivered shortly. That's not funny, she said. Funny? I'll tell you what's funny. Your face. It's so hysterical, it makes me want to throw up. You know, that's not a nice way to talk to your fiance. Listen here, damn it, I said. I want you to get the hell out of my house before I throw you over the horizon. Try it, she said, with all the confidence of a horse in a three-legged race. Time was fleeting fast now. If I was to get out of this predicament, I had to do it now. Right now. All right, I said. You win. Good. I'm glad you finally came to your senses, she said. Now where are we going for breakfast? How about Ricky's? They have the best pancakes in the continent, I said in an almost too perfect tone. Sure, sounds good, the sea urchin responded. Let me put some makeup on first. Now was my chance. She turned around and bent over into her purse. I turned quickly and dashed into my room. She rose quickly. Where are you going? I slammed the door shut before the sound wave of her voice paralyzed my body. I locked it with a flash. I could hear her little feet racing toward the room. Suddenly, there was a loud crash against the door. Open this goddamn door, she sounded like a reptilian lion roaring its final battle cry. Never, I yelled. I gathered a few clothes, a half pound of white rhino I was saving for Halloween, my Marilyn Monroe bowl, a few smoke bombs I kept in case I was pursued by ninjas, and my Bob Marley joint papers and headed for the window. As I approached, I reached under my bed and grabbed an Elvis piggy bank I had underneath. I cocked my arm back like a Spartan, readying his javelin. Motherfucker, you better open this goddamn door now! Her scream rang out like a sonic boom. I breathed in so deep I could hear the walls buckling inward. Never! I screamed with the force of a Nordic warrior. My arm slung forward and the king took his last flight out of Graceland. The glass of my bedroom window shattered into a thousand pieces. At the same time, the door blew open and the beast that was once behind it now stood in my room, her green eye glowing with rage. You've done it now, boy, the eye said. Where the fuck do you think you're going, you little fuck? Remember this day, you charlatan succubus, I screamed. Remember this day as the day you nearly caught Banff. The boot struck me across the right side of my face. She immediately ran towards me. I shook off the blow and ran towards the window. My intention was to leap through the broken window and land safely on the pavement like a jaguar jumping off the limb of a tree. Just before launch, the winch grabbed me by the collar and pulled me to the ground. Not so fast, fucker, 
she sneered. She raised her hoof and slammed it down on my forehead. White sparks filled my field of vision. I shook off as much as I could. I saw her raise her foot again. Fucker, she screamed. This time, when her foot came down, I managed to catch it and push up and backwards, sending the vile witch backwards, stumbling, then falling against the wall opposite the window of freedom. I quickly got up, threw my belongings out the window and charged forward. Motherfucker, she moaned. I leaped through the window with the grace of a gazelle and I landed on the pavement with the skill of a snapping turtle. I grabbed my bag off the pavement and ran. I spotted a cab coming down the street on the opposite side and flagged it down. The creature from my nightmare was at the window, ranting and raving like a lunatic who thought they had won the lottery, but was told they hadn't. I couldn't make out what she was saying. All I knew was that I had made it out, soul intact. Cab driver, please take me to downtown, please. It was still early morning as we drove. I rolled down the window and let the breeze hit my face. I could taste the air, and thankfully, it was sweet. The end. Thank you for joining us, folks. Good evening, and good night.